Hi there and welcome to the channel. Today I'll be diving into a little color experiment part one out of two. So here I will share a method called the fish pond technique. The Danish knitter Lærke Bakker uses the fish pond technique to choose yarn colors for her design. I'm curious to see if the method can be used for illustrations as well. The approach is straightforward. Simply put your colors into a container in my case, acrylic paints in a dog hat. Without looking, you pick a certain amount of colors. I limit myself to three colors. So the colors I have chosen blindly are burnt umber, Ultra blue and yellow ochre. This is then my palette that I will be working with. I will throw in a black and white as well so I'm able to make a color lighter or darker. Naturally I need something to paint on so here I've just created a sketch of a character on forehand. Uh, I won't be making shades I'll just be doing some solid blocking in of colors here to keep things simple. Let's just apply some of the yellow ochre, burnt umber, and finally ultra blue. So as far as I know now of a bit of color theory, I'm certainly no expert at all. I'm just beginning to learn. So this I would say as a warm color, warm and a cold color. So I think maybe it could be a nice combination of different uh, color temperatures. So now it's just all about uh, coloring this guy in and choosing what color should be which. Um, I think I will go with yellow ochre for his shirt. Let's just start with that. Then I will go with the burnt umber for the pants. So uh, right now I'm very satisfied actually with the combination of the yellow ochre against the Burn umber. I believe this is because they are both earthy colors. Uh, so right now I'm trying to think about where I should apply the blue color. Mm. Because there's also this thing about how colors interact together when like the blue can have a certain effect, but how, how will the blue uh, act when it's up against these warmer colors. I have no clue, so we'll just see. Uh, so what should, where should I put the blue? Hmm. It's a good question, good question, good question. Could it be maybe for the hat? Could it be for the hat? His holders here for the pants, the bottles. There we go. And now I think actually I will make use of my uh, black and whites also to uh, let's just go and add a light blue because I th feel that his hat could be uh, light blue. No, wait a second. 
no let's just let's add some white to the yellow ochre to make a kind of a skin tone white over here mix that up i'll have to remember to make a note for myself how i mix the colors so i can remake them Yes, I think I will actually also make his hat, his hack hat and the box uh, in this burnt umber. So there's a sense of uh, cohesiveness. And then I will make the shoes and his beard um, in a darker tone. So again, I will cheat a little bit and put a bit of black into the burn number. Just a little bit, unless it has dried out. Has it dried out? <laughs> oh, I think it has. So my black has dried completely out, so we will do it in another way. We will add some blue to the burn number. Actually, this is also a good way you can kind of just mix the colors like this. So you get the harmony in that way. Still limited by this palette. Oh, that's actually quite nice. I don't know if you can see how this color looks. Let's try it out. There we go. An illustration used by choosing only three colors and choosing them blindfolded. So that was the fish pond method. I think that this method is really interesting because first of all I think it's a lot of fun to to just choose the colors by uh, by accident or by coincidence uh, and secondly I think it's a really great method because it surprises you it shows you a, a palette that you wouldn't have been uh, otherwise analyzing yourself into and I think that, that this color palette here that came by coincidence is uh, really strong. And um, yeah, it could might very well be a, a palette that I'll end up using uh, for a piece. Thank you so much for watching along and stay tuned for part two of these color experiments.